This is by far the hardest I've ever worked on an iOS beta video. iOS 13 beta 5 is here and it brings with it the most features I've ever seen going from one beta to another. So the first thing is in the setup menu or upon updating to beta 5, you get the option to set the appearance from light to dark in a custom menu. I did get some storage back. So before 23 gigabytes available after updating, 30.77 and that was beta 4 to beta 5. Upon using it for a few hours, I noticed that some of the respring bugs I'd encountered before aren't happening, in particular when going to the app switcher and closing it really fast, I used to have that one, and animations are further refined. Scrolling in particular feels amazing on beta 5 and Apple has so much attention to detail on this firmware. First thing I wanna mention is on my iPhone XS Max, the icons are condensed. And this was something I found through Photoshop. I swear I was seeing it and then I verified Apple actually moved them inwards a little bit from the outer edge and the bottom rows have been condensed downwards. So that's an immediate effect you can tell on the iPhone XS Max. I'm not sure about other devices, haven't checked. And now on iPad, Apple allows you to change your default app icon layout. So in display and brightness settings, you now have a section here here for app icon size, it goes from more, which is default, to bigger, and this changes the grid layout from five by six to four by five, more of the iOS 12 era look here. It also gets rid of the widgets page, so you no longer have access to that by default on the front, and the layout's the same in vertical view. Also on the home screen, you're now allowed to pin more than two favorites here. Previously, it restricted you. At the bottom of the widgets page, Apple has also updated the weather icons. They now stand out a little bit more. And now with dark mode enabled on the iPad, the Apple Pencil, little prompt up there, now conforms to the dark mode look. In the slide overview on iPad, you can now swipe both ways. Previously, it was limited just to the left. And now you can make your cursor even smaller. Apple has added an additional stop here for a smaller cursor size. Now on all non 3D touch devices in messages, Apple has added a peak function when long pressing on a conversation. This is what you previously got. In the status bar, the LTE, 5G, 4G, whatever you have logo has been made larger, bolder to match the sizing of the battery and status bar icons. A few changes to the volume HUD. As you can see, now it's taller and slimmer. So not as wide, Apple is adjusting that. There's a new haptic feedback response when you hit the end. And notice that there are now more stops. There are 34 stops versus 16 for the settings. So you can really, really fine tune that sound now, which is amazing. Also, the amount of time it takes to hit empty or full is now about twice as fast, which is very nice. And when you actually thin out all the way, notice how it's now square or rectangle shape not tapered off like over here, beta four looks way better. If you have the volume HUD up on screen and take a screenshot, notice how it disappears right away. Not new to beta five, but new to me. In the sound settings, if you have change with buttons enabled and your device is in silent mode, you go to change the volume, you'll get haptic feedback upon this prompt. Now in beta five, you can actually adjust that ringer even if in silent mode. And the ringer volume HUD gets the same treatment. It's now sleeker, faster, has 34 stops of adjustment. And if you actually reach the end, it stretches and this very nice new animation looks sleeker. Now when taking screenshots in beta five, your screenshots within default applications are rounded. So you get that rounded edge there. Also when cropping full page screenshots in Safari, the interface has been condensed once again. There's a new screen recording animation now, when it shows up, it'll go straight to the screen recording logo and then fade into the time. On the home screen, 3D touching on the Photos app reveals some fixed descriptions here. Also, 3D touching on Mail now by default shows you how many messages you have in your inboxes, even without notifications enabled. Podcasts has a new logo on its 3D touch platter for check for new episodes, and you can actually read the full text now. The dock app icons now also have the rearrange option when 3D touching previously they did not. When 3D touching on folders, you can see that the organization has changed. The app with the notification is now separated by this break from the other options. And that's a new feature on its own. The notifications now show up for the folders. This was new in beta four. In the now playing interface, the play, fast forward and rewind icons are all sleeker on beta five. The volume icons down here are refined, slightly smaller. And going over here into the HomePod selection, the check mark is now different. Also the text for speakers and TV has been moved all the way to the left, very subtle. Miss this in beta four, there's a new icon when you have dual AirPods or dual audio set up in the control center. You can actually 3D touch on the volume platter and adjust the volume independently for each device. Wherever applicable in iOS, whenever searching, if you have a segmented search results area right here, you can actually swipe the bar. Previously, you could not. A few changes in music. When dragging the seeker, you no longer have the timestamp on top of it. They're to the left 
left and to the right, and they're responsive now, so they bounce up and down, which is very cool. Also, the text no longer blurs out for the titling up top. In music, the Sync Your Library splash screen is now adjusted to fit your display, no longer cut off. And when a song has no lyrics, the lyrics button is now grayed out. So previously, you could click on it. When 3D touching on a song in music, the interface here is now grouped, different, much like the share sheet. And the suggest less like this icon has been updated. The share sheet in iOS has been revamped completely. Now everything is grouped in different sections instead of being this jumbled mess. Up top, you can pin your favorites. And down here, manage has been replaced with edit actions. So as you can see, this kind of explains the grouping better here. Let's say I want uh, airplay up top and then print. And that's now my favorites. So everything is grouped differently. There is a new icon look. They're not blue anymore. They're black. Not sure if I like that. The little X on the top right is now bolder. Just a much friendlier share sheet. Also, the airdrop icon here is bolder, easier to discern. In Safari, the option to open a new tab has returned. Thank goodness. The arrange tabs by website option in Safari is now fully legible, where it was cut off in beta 4. Also, the top bar in landscape is now translucent in beta 5. It wasn't before. Also, larger X close buttons in the 3D touch menu and on the actual tabs. When in private mode on Safari, the bottom navigation icons are now black instead of blue. When using Face ID to sign into certain websites, you now get a progress indicator on the bottom. For certain websites in the search bar, you actually get a navigatable header up here so you can quickly get into the section that you want. On iPad, you now get the option to merge all windows together, especially useful when using split screen view. There's a new HomePod splash screen called Siri for Everyone to set up multiple voices, only accessible to users with HomePod OS 13, which is basically no one right now. The Home app now has six new default wallpapers with this texture in the background. Looks pretty neat, although I don't like that they removed the old three. If you have an AC set up, in the Home map, up here you have one central area now to control the temperature and the fan speed. Previously it was two separate ones. In Maps, you now have a slightly tweaked splash screen with a new icon for Look Around. And that new icon for Look Around extends to the Maps application as well wherever accessible, it's now even bolder. On iPad, in the expose view, the top right plus icon has been filled in. And in general, there's a new function here. When you close a window, there's a reopen closed window option. There's a new API change in iOS 13 where without updating the app, for example, in Reddit, the notification badges now appear bolder, larger. And this is gonna happen in any app pretty much with these little toggles. This is an Apple side change. There's a new Nemoji hairstyle called short and straight with tussle. And that's what it looks like. Changing from dark or light mode is now animated. A very subtle fade in not as abrupt. Also settings has received some refinements. It's now not as spread out, more condensed like before. When selecting a wallpaper, the preview is now rounded much more pleasing. The bottom controls now respond to dark mode. Also, those buttons are now animated. They flash instead of just fade out, so more discernible. And when changing a wallpaper and you decide to enter dark mode, that wallpaper will now respond, where previously it does not. And when setting it, it now happens way faster. At the same time, look at that. Wi-Fi networks now have an updated check mark as well, becoming congruent in all areas of iOS. In an individual app settings, for example, YouTube, all of the permissions are in one place now instead of being scattered throughout settings. The new FaceTime attention correction feature has been removed from the FaceTime settings for whatever reason. Maybe Apple's gonna work on it some more before releasing. In the keyboard settings, delete undoes slide is now renamed to delete slide to type by word. In accessibility keyboards, the option for full keyboard access has been removed. That's been integrated by default. And there's a new section here where previously it was grouped differently. It's now called hardware keyboards. In accessibility shortcuts, there's a new dark appearance option, which enables dark mode with a triple tap of your side button or home button. Very cool. The icons in accessibility have been fixed. Previously it was a glitched blue turtle, now they're black. Also in voiceover, the grouping has been changed, commands has been brought down to this group, and typing style is now renamed to typing. Inside, you have even more options now. In beta 5, with dark mode enabled, if you enable smart invert, it no longer glitches iOS. It looks proper as it should, so Apple has fixed that. In the assistive touch menu, many of the icons have been made larger. For example, notifications and control center here, among many others. In assistive touch, there's a new section for pointer devices. The pointing devices has been renamed to just devices. 
and inside there is a new description here. Also, cursor has been renamed to pointer style, so some reshuffling of options. In the battery settings, the auto brightness suggestions icon is different now. Very small one, but this grabber bar has some updated text, smaller and bolder. In the CarPlay settings, the image now conforms to dark mode. In the About settings, the SIM text has been fixed. In Messages, the Peak 3D Touch functionality has been removed, and now it's a hold for more info. When attaching a photo in Messages, going on All Photos, Camera Roll has been renamed to All Photos, and Recently Added has been renamed to Recents. And the stickers icon in Messages now conforms to Dark Mode. In the App Store, if you click on a pop-up, it now covers your status bar looks cleaner and the X button now sits higher. Also the download interface has been cleaned up. It had a bunch of weird lines before, now it's been fixed. And within the app store, pending updates is called upcoming automatic updates, sectioning off your apps ready to be updated. And this actual dragger right here, something I didn't know is to close it very easily, just slide over and then down and it just closes like that. It's not new, but new to me. With dark mode enabled, the review section now actually pops properly instead of being negative and the icon for your avatar is now larger. Also, the Apple Arcade now has a larger arcade logo with a little description for playing ad-free. In Photos, there's a new splash screen here for curating your photos. When it starts to work, there's a very nice animation. I love that attention to detail. And when it's done, you'll see this splash screen right here, letting you know that curation is complete at the bottom of your photos. A very annoying issue that's been resolved when screenshotting or saving photos, they wouldn't save to the proper position. Now they do, before it saves somewhere way up there and you'd have to scroll to find it. The markup interface has some new updates. Now it's condensed towards the middle, so not as spaced out. The signature tool is now full screen. The magnifier tool has some visual changes, not as bold on the borders. And when using custom tools like this, the bottom interface has moved to the middle, consolidated. The interface, when using NFC to hold near reader has been updated. It's now smoother. The Files app now supports background audio, so you can play music or videos in here and go elsewhere and still hear it. Also, the markup icon top right has been made smaller, and the submenu now looks like this. Just like the 3D touch menu on the home screen, everything is organized and divided. The actual markup interface in Files has been fixed, brought down lower to give you more room. A number of awards have been added to the Activity app from 1,250 to 2,000 move goals. A very slightly tweaked health app splash screen where it says next instead of continue. In the health app, the search tab is now called browse with a new icon. And on the main page, the way that highlights are displayed is now different, new interfaces. And if I go into edit here, there are a number of new icons for activity, body measurements, hearing, nutrition is now filled in and more icon changes down here. In the shortcuts app, you'll notice the automation tab is gone. A developer responded saying Apple has removed it only temporarily. Now you can peek on certain functions and you'll get this interface here. And the actual plus icon on the top right is now bolder. In the FaceTime interface, the end call button is now bolder, larger. In the mail app, there's a new tab view for drafts, much like in Safari. Also the icons when sliding over have been made bolder easier to discern, same thing over here on this side. When selecting text now on iOS 13 beta 5, there's a new slide in animation instead of slide over. So once again, select a word and it comes in from up top instead of from the side, very cool. Also in dictation, you can actually dictate without switching the keyboard. This isn't new to beta 5, but check this out. Привет, как дела? Как у вас сегодня? It actually translates without changing the keyboard. In the text formatting section of notes, the icons for insert over here or tab are different. And when selecting the options, the actual background color is now more spaced out. In the following section of the news app, the header has a new text design and no longer blurs when scrolling. And the logos in more info are now larger in news. In podcasts, only the selected tab is now glowing purple, not all of them like before. In the library section of TV, the splash screen or text is now different when you have no content. The sorted by section in the files app now has a new icon. A bit hard to see, but in the find my app, the bottom bar is now translucent in dark mode. In the face gallery section of the watch app, there's a new sorting here for the watch faces. And the ones that are the same, you'll notice have new modules on them been slightly tweaked visually. And when scrolling here, the header has been fixed. It now has a translucent bar up top. The field test app on iOS is now properly fitted and actually works. And there's a new icon for it as a developer has shared. A very annoying bug in Spotify has been fixed where the now playing bar was sticky and had a delay when clicking on it. The files application now supports the import of raw photos. So no longer do they have to be JPEG. A couple interface changes in CarPlay. The icons are now darker when pressed 
and the artist is now separated from the song name here. There's also now an option to disable show album art. And in CarPlay, HomeKit automations have now returned. And the multi-core score dropped, but nothing to be concerned about. Performance is amazing. Thanks for watching, guys. There it is, iOS 13 Beta 5. Oh boy, this was exhausting.